the country, I mean, there is, look around, the ghetto was in the streets, big cities, there is the demonic affliction around us, those hooked on crack, those hooked on heroin, and so forth. And you can go out and make a difference, feeding them, even giving them money. Maybe even going out and buying them one beer. I mean, because, you know, a little wine, sometimes that can help. Just a little bit, but you got to make sure you take your money out of your pocket and you actually buy it for them and give it to them. Because a lot of these people, they, you know, they want to get a beer or wine, maybe a hit of crack or coke or something, you know. You don't know exactly what it is. Because there's a lot of deceit and there's people out there just, you know, they just want to, you know, take advantage of whoever they can to survive and live. Now, I don't recommend you just going out and, you know, just buying them a bottle of wine and beer. I, I, you know, I'd buy them a sandwich on top of that. Or just pull out some pocket of change in your pocket and give it to them. But that's not necessarily the best answer all the time. Give them blankets, give them food, you know. I wouldn't invite them to your house, you know, in the old days, you know. It was customary. Unless the Holy Spirit calls you to do it, but, you know, go out and feed them whatever. Give them blankets, give them clothes. And then, as you do that, you can, you know, reach him with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Witness to him, you know, because ultimately in the end of the day, we want to witness to him. And we witness to him by how we live behave by our character, our conviction, and so forth. And that's not the only thing you can do. There's plenty of programs out there that are... Because not only we just uh, relieve them temporarily, but we want to teach them how to fish. And the only way that you're going to help people out, ultimately, is help them to be able to make money on their own. Because the only answer to that kind of stuff is capitalism. I believe in Christian capitalism. Capitalism is the answer. Communism, socialism, Marxism, and so forth is not the answer. Capitalism is what works, has worked, and will continue to work. And if they can be elevated to use some of their talents to create a business where they can make money, they can, you know, so on. It's not the only answer, there's plenty of other answers, and I don't have 100% all the answers. The Bible has the answer. God, the Holy Spirit, will lead you and guide you to do what God has called you to. If you have that, that desire or sesh, uh, intercessory prayer 
And the fact of the matter is, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, which is the, which is America and the European countries, are a lot more successful and prosperous because of the blessings of the covenant of grace. And so they tend to be more successful than the Gentile world, the six-day creation. That's just a fact. Does it make it right or whatever? Because once a Gentile becomes a born again, they become a member of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Israel that is from the east, from the west, from the south, from the north, worldwide. And the world will slowly and gradually be Christianized. And I believe when I say that, that poverty will be more and more minimized to the point where Poverty will hardly exist, and the wealth of the wicked will be transferred to God's elect and very elect for the work of ministry, fulfilling the work of ministry. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be completely eliminated, because the world is going to be slowly and gradually Christianized, ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity, but that does not necessarily mean that all that stuff will be completely destroyed. There'll be more Christians than not. There'll be more people saved than not. You know, and it seems completely like an impossibility. Like, you know, you look around the way things are, it's like, man, I don't understand how that's going to even be possible. But remember, it's going to probably take millions and millions of years before we get to that point. But that doesn't mean it's going to poverty and all that stuff is going to be eliminated. Or that every single person at that time when we get to that point is going to be a Christian. Granted, there will be more people that are Christians than not. But once Jesus Christ returns at that point, he will destroy the devil and the flesh and then poverty and all that stuff will be completely eliminated. The resurrection will take place. The great white throne judgment, the rewards for good and bad deeds will be handed out. And then the eternal state, the third world age and heaven age will be established, the eternal state. And in that period of time, there is going to be no poverty, period. It's going to be wonderful and it's going to be on this earth. Paradise, paradise lost will become paradise restored. And so those are the things that we can look forward to even though the odds look like it's against us. We may be at this point in time uh, losing the battle of the culture wars at this point of time in history. But that does not mean we're going to lose the war. We're going to win the war. But we simply need to make the steps that we need to do. There's countless of programs out there that are helping people, the ghettos and so forth. And God is calling people to inspiration other churches, other Christian people to come up with new ideas to, to the best they can to eradicate, eliminate poverty, institutions and so forth. There is so many things out there that one can come up with. But, you know, the third class citizens of the world are becoming more and more and more and the second class citizens are becoming less and less and less and so there's this great divide the first class and the third class 
and the middle class is disappearing. The third, uh, second class. The class system works, or the class system exists. More prevalent in England, America it exists. But in America, you can work from third class to second class to first class. Well, at least it used to be that way. But all the things that are occurring really uh, prevents people from moving up. And of course, Obamacare is not going to do any good. It's not going to help the poor. It's a lousy system that's not going to work and it's going to prove it. And as we go forward on it, it's not going to work. Universal health care would work better than Obamacare. And that's not saying much. Because, you know, a lot of, you know, the Democrats think that, or the Democrats communicate to people that, you know, they're for the poor. And if you're poor, you need to vote their way. That's just not true. The fact of the matter is, you know, a lot of you probably won't get this, the Republicans are more for the poor than the Democrats. You know, and I'm a, a reform Tory. I believe in some Republican principles, and I believe in some Democratic principles. But I'm not loyal to Republicans or the Democrats. I'm a reform Tory. That's my political view, and I believe in some. Uh, Republican ideas as well as I believe in some Democratic ideas and the Bible dictates that to me by as I learn and study the Word of God. Now, don't get me wrong, people's intentions are, you know, admirable in their own little worldview. They really truly believe they're doing good, and there's good people as far as humanity is concerned, although biblically in a theistic Christian worldview, their ideas are not that great, you know, but their intentions are good. So that doesn't mean you have to, you know, not work with people who hold to the philosophical naturalist belief organization that they're trying to do some good. You can get involved in that to try to do some good. Uh, be unified on the principles of trying to do good and disagree on stuff that doesn't line up with the truth of the Word of God. But the fact of the matter is we as Christians need to do more because the government can't uh, 
fix all the 